And to discuss the state of war in Ukraine, we turn once again to Michael Kaufman, Research Program Director in the Russia Studies Program at the Center for Naval Analyses. Michael Kaufman, good to have you back on the program. What's the significance of Russian forces seizing all of the Luhansk region? Well, like with uh, those two main cities, now that they have the rest of the region, they're at least part of the way towards their political objective, which is seizing the entire administrative territory of the Donbass. However, a lot of the harder fighting is still ahead for the Russian military. The Ukrainian military conducted a withdrawal from that area, and they are now building a new defensive line. They are going to fortify around the main cities of uh, Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. And so, while you could say that Russia has made incremental or fitful progress, it's still very far short of their actual political goals so far in this war. So short term, Russia's ability to seize those territories in the Donetsk region, Slovians, Kramatorsk, why will it be difficult for them to do that just in the short term? Well, those areas are more fortified, and the Russian military, like the Ukrainian military, has taken very substantial losses. So this has become a grinding war of attrition. Territorial gains tend to be incremental at best. And they require a tremendous amount of use of artillery and other types of fire. So I suspect that we're going to see battles grind on in the Donbass at least the next month or two. The outcome, of course, is indeterminate. These things are very difficult to predict. But even if the Russian military is able to take this part of the Donbass, right, these successes are not decisive losses for Ukraine, ultimately. And the Russian military is likely to pay a substantial price in trying to gain this territory. And so longer term, as you say, a war of attrition, that's what both militaries have to fight. What's going to determine Russia's ability to sustain that fight? You know, at the end of the day, these wars often come down to manpower, material, who's able to replace their losses the best, who's able to adjust and build a force that can sustain the conflict. Both sides have significant challenges. The Russian military enjoys a local advantage, particularly advantage in firepower or artillery in the Donbass. The Ukrainian military right now is in a bit of a valley in terms of equipment and capability. It's solely trying to assimilate Western equipment, artillery, and trying to change the kind of equipment and munitions that the force depends on. So this is a very challenging time for the Ukrainian military, probably the coming two months in particular. And that said, the Ukraine somewhat enjoys long-term advantages in this war that is conditioned on sustained Western support because Ukraine has the manpower and if it has access to Western military equipment and training to use that equipment, over time it can develop significant advantages. Ukrainian officials are talking about launching counteroffensives uh, against the Russian forces using those heavier weapons that you just talked about. How will those weapons affect Ukraine's ability to reseize territory that Russia's occupied, if at all? Western military equipment, particularly different types of artillery systems, will help equalize the current substantial disadvantage that Ukraine has relative to uh, the massed Russian artillery firepower. That said, right now, both forces are only kind of capable of localized attacks. Ukraine has been conducting small localized counteroffensives in other parts of the front, trying to set themselves up in a better position down the line. Neither military really has the force capacity left for big offensives or breakout attacks, the kind of things that can generate momentum, right? Nor is either military close to collapse. Over time, Ukraine may be in a position to conduct a substantial counteroffensive, perhaps in one of the other regions like Kherson. But that doesn't just depend on military equipment. People tend to fix their military equipment on technology and capabilities. They make a significant difference. They are rarely game changers. You have to look at the quality of the force, and you have to look at the overall military. And so do you believe that on the Russian side, they can wage the same kind of war that they've been waging in the East indefinitely well, indefinitely is a very hard test to pass. I'm not sure anything can be waged indefinitely, but the Russian military is playing to a strength, leveraging massed artillery firepower, right, which minimizes the disadvantages and problems it has in the force, and taking territory incrementally. Yes, they can sustain it for quite some time, but they too have big challenges when it comes to manpower, the sustainment of this fight, and the solutions they've taken to keep the Russian military in the fight in what is likely to be a protracted war have their own drawbacks. They come at the expense of long-term degradation of the Russian force. 
So they may not be that sustainable if we put it into a much longer timeline. Michael Kaufman, thank you very much. Thanks for having me back on the program.